Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Snyder and I'm recording my 15 minute lesson over comparing fractions um, with different numerators and denominators. Um, so for today we are going to go over our I can statement first and that's basically what you're going to be able to do after you have gone through this lesson um, and it is I can compare and write down the results of two fractions that have different numerators and denominators by using relational symbols greater than, less than, equal to, or not equal to, and by doing so with visual models. Um, so some terms that you may need to know, the relational symbols, we kind of just went over them with the greater than, lesser than, or equal to. Um, I have them up here too as a key, so if you get confused during the lesson and you need to look up here, that's more than okay. Um, that's what that's here for, is for you to become familiar with those. So another term that you guys may need for this lesson would um, to know what the numerator is and what the denominator is. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard it multiple times and you probably do know what it is, but just to make sure, the numerator is at the top and the denominator is at the bottom. So the way that I remember that is when I write it out, the denominator is at the bottom, so I always think down. And that's kind of how I remember that. Um, and then obviously if this one's here, the numerator is up top. So today we're just going to go through a couple, um, like a worksheet or handout and kind of just get you familiar with the concept because I think that doing it as a group first will work out um, in your favor. And then if you have any questions, you can let me know. So the handout that I'm going to be handing out is this Comparing Proper Fractions Worksheet. And we're, like I said, we're just going to go through them together. I'm going to give you two different ways to model them. And then if you're confused after we model them or they look too similar for you, then we can go ahead and I'll show you how to um, find it out by multiplication. So um, the first equation or first comparison on the worksheet, if you guys notice, is 1 sixth, and it's compared to 1 half. So what we're going to do, like I said, I'm going to show you a couple of models. So we are going to take the 1 sixth, and throw it up here on the board. And then we're going to throw up the one half. Just to kind of give you guys a visual. Alrighty. So first, in order to know what one sixth is, we look at our pie that has one, two, three, four, five, six different pieces of that pie and we are only going to cover in color in so the denominator or the parts of the whole the numerator that is what we're going to color in so to compare we're going to color in one piece of the pie and go ahead and do it and follow along with me for this worksheet and then again the denominator are the parts of the whole, and the numerator is what I'm going to color in. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So by looking at these two pies, you can definitely tell that one has more than the other. With that being said, which one do you guys think it would be? And you're correct, it's this one. This one has more, so you're going to go ahead and one-sixth is less than one-half. <coughs> Excuse me. So the answer to this one would be one-sixth is less than half. And like I said, if you need to refer up here to the less than symbol so you know which way that one faced, that's more than okay. So this is one way that we can go ahead and model it. Another way 
that I was going to show you guys is that whenever you have a square, you're going to, or a rectangle, sorry, you're going to want to make sure that you draw them the same exact size because that's how you'll be able to compare. If one is longer than the other, that's not a true, accurate um, kind of visual of what a hole looks like. So like I said, make sure they're the same size. You're going to go ahead. I usually cut them in half first just so I can kind of get a visual of that. That's a little off. Sorry. And I messed up again. Let's see here. Let's try this again. So they're going to be the same size. This one is going to reflect one sixth. This one is going to reflect one half. So I need to make this one exactly half. And then again here, I'm going to just color in one of the six blocks. And I'm going to color in one of these six blocks. So that's another way using visual models that we can see that one sixth is less than one half. Excuse me again. All right, so then moving on. Our next equation, or our next comparison, sorry, is going to be 15 sixteenths and 1 eighth. So we're going to bring up the 16th pie chart, and we're going to bring up the 8th pie chart. Here, there are 16 pieces that make up the whole. We are going to color in the numerator, so the 15. So we're going to color in every single one of them except one. So it's pretty full already. One eighth, there are eight pieces that make up this hole. And we are going to color in just one. So when we do that, you can tell that 15 sixteenths is greater than one eighth. And that is just one way to visually model that. And all of these fractions that we're working with today have different denominators and numerators. Let's go ahead and do a different one. Let's go ahead and do I guess I didn't model that one with our squares. Sorry about that. So just so you can see, just in case this way works better for you, I want you to be able to see both ways. I gotta make sure they're lined up and that they're looking the same. All right, so on this top one, we're gonna color in 15 of the 16 parts. And then we're gonna come down to the 1 8th. And we're gonna color in just that one. And then you can visually see there as well that one, 15 16 is greater than. I'm also going to go over real quick. Um, what if I 
or like an example of, let's say here, two thirds and four sixths. So if we're looking at thirds, And we're looking at six. It's not going to stay up there. All right. So the three make up the whole, but we only need the two. So we're going to go ahead. Color in just the two. Two-thirds. We're going to hop over here and we're going to go ahead and color there's six parts of the whole. We're going to color in just four of those. All right, well visually looking at them, what can you tell about them? Do they look similar? or maybe almost exact or equal to. And they are, they are equal to. Right there, so there's an example. So we've done a greater than, a less than, and an equal to example. <coughs> Excuse me, allergies are rough today. Let's go ahead and look at them with our square models. So then we're going to have to make three equal parts. And then over here, we're going to have to make six equal parts. And we're going to do them just like we did the other two. <coughs> we're going to color in two of these thirds. And then we're going to color in four of these six. And as you can tell, they're equal right there. And that's how you can determine they're equal. And then if for some reason um, you can't tell by the model or you're just wondering if maybe you drew them a little bit too big here, too small there, and it's really close, you think they're equal, but you're not quite sure, <clears throat> then you can do multiplication to kind of check yourself. Um, I really want you guys to work with the models um, first because that's why what we're covering in the I can statement. But if they are too close and you're ever questioning it, I want to at least show you how you can tell if these two are equal fractions or not. All right, so we're going to move our four six down to here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make them have common denominators. That way you can tell, hey, I know for sure these are equal because the denominators are the same. <coughs> and the numerator numerators are the same. So in order to get these to have the same denominator, which common denominator would they have? You can put three into six. So we're just gonna take this times one, times one, or just leave it the same because you're gonna get four six. In order to get six as our common denominator, I need to times this by two, right? Because that's what equals six. So times two equals six. Now we have a common denominator. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the numerator that we did the denominator and times it by 2. And you're going to get 2 times 2 equals 4. That's another way to determine if your models, if you want to make sure that it's completely, 
the same. Um, sorry, it's kind of hard to see there, but they both came out to equaling four six. Alrighty, and if you have any questions, make sure that you guys let me know. Um, but this is basically what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to use the pie models and I want you to use the um, array models as well. And like I said, if you have any questions at all, you can reference our greater than, equal than, or equal to. Remember that the numerator is on top. The denominator is down, so it is on the bottom. And then you can use this to check as well. And like I said, if you have any questions, make sure that you ask. That way you're not doing something continuously wrong over and over again. Um, but you can go ahead and we can fix it. And then you can move on from there. And then you can help your peers if you need to. So.